If you notice in the background, I'm here with the local legend Ryan Tazler. We are going flathead fishing on a school night. Don't tell anybody. We're chasing flatheads, hopefully big ones. Sometimes we catch small ones, sometimes we catch none. But we're gonna be fishing for them. And it's weird that Ryan brought bait and I didn't. Usually we have an exchange of bait for beverage and it rolls were flip-flop this time. So I don't know, maybe it'll change our luck around or maybe it'll be more of the same. We'll Either, find way, we Either way, we got everything we need. All right, let's go. Oh man, that smells terrible. Yeah. Propane. Propane and propane accessories. That's a big rock. I wonder how many low, lower units have been sheared on that over the years. I don't think that. That ain't propane, bud. No, that's yeah. We're cruising along about two miles an hour. Yeah. That's faster than I thought we'd be going. All the high water we've had the last few years has taught me just how low this really is. Oh, yeah. Going a blistering 3.5 miles per hour oh. in 197 feet of water. That's, drop -off. that's pretty good drop off. Seems more like blue cat water than flatheads. What do I know? I don't think this is it. I think it's the one after. I think. This is one that's going to be okay. I think so. Oh, Anthony Rizzo, solo home run. And Nick Castellanos, solo home, solo home run. We're down two to ten. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, butthead. Yeah, it's after this one. Yeah, we're we're to the area where we're gonna fish. We're gonna evaluate and figure out where the best spot is, or at least what we think is the best spot. Our opinion doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not really seeing the best spot yet. See that fish tailing right there, right off the rocks? Oh, he's gone now. I think it was a. Oh, there he is. See him kicking? What is that? Is that a carp? It's about gotta be. 17 pound walleye. I will dive in with Yes! I will dive in after him. What do you got for depth here, dude? 2-2. Two, 2-2? Two. Two, two. I will resort to my primitive paddle, or er, depth finder. Is there a little channel over by the trees that runs in? I don't hate that. I don't. So there's a little chute for him to run along. That's kind of what I like too. Like there's a bunch of unique features to put baits on, and a lot of stuff comes together here. We finally picked our spot. Well, I picked it, and Ryan was like, "Whatever, I'll sit here." And. Uh, but what I like is there's a creek flowing in right there, and even though the water's low and creeks are really good when the water's up, when the water's low and there's not much current flowing in, you got steady flow, probably different temperature water right there. That's something unique, different, that's going to draw bait in. Hopefully draw something big and ugly, and not Ryan either. I'm not very I'm talking something with gills. Beavers, that's a good sign. I hate them, but it's a good sign. Cast my bobber, check the depth. It is not three feet, I will tell you that much. We have some pretty wonderful baits, courtesy of Ryan. I feel like uh, I'm being pampered right now. Give me yes, one of them bullheads or sunnies, either or. How yes, about that, one? that will do. That's a dandy <laughs> creek chub. Yeah. I'll gladly put him on as well. Yeah, I've got some but I'm not going to put him on the bottom. <laughs> That's just asking for it. Yep. All right, so that one's shallow. Let's all get out. That one's going to be a bobber too, so I got to re-rig that one. And then this one will not be a bobber. 
one's going on the bottom. I'm going to, I mean, the, the current's light, but I'm still going to use a big sinker. If you don't know where the snags are at, and I want them to stay put wherever I toss them. Look at that fish up there. That might be bait. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, he hit a hole. You're a real fisherman if you can catch him like that. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, easy. Gosh, that is a bruiser creek chub. Oh wait, I can't put him on the bottom. So there's a bullhead in there? Yes, there's are there four or five. Are they little? They're five, six inches. Maybe. Okay. They're not great. That's decent. Should cut the fins off him to continue my experiment. You putting a bullhead on? I would like to. Do I, have my, do I have my scissors? I don't believe in cutting the, the fins off of them. But we're going to keep trying. Okay. Bullhead with fins. They look like little tadpoles. Bullheads without fins. Apparently, flies like them better. I gotta send him kind of downtown. I'm gonna aim for that beaver, I think. The one who just splashed his tail over there. Oh, he just got turtled, I bet. Because he dropped it. That's true, turtles are fat and lazy. Yeah. What? Oh my gosh, that is a bat. What the heck? Are you okay? are you okay, buddy? You are not okay. Shut up. Oh, he's hissing at me. God, I feel bad. Did I step on him? No, he landed right behind you. I thought it was one of those big moths. He landed why I did that? Yeah. Let's hope he flies away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, definitely a channel cat. He's got the scuffs on him. You take the fins off of them, and now they're they become prey. They become channel cat prey. All right, I guess I'll put a new bait on. You were bowed up for a second. You know how much you can see on camera. Nothing. How do you feel right now? They're crappy. Yeah, they were. I thought you threw the crappy kind, away. Kind of buggy. Buggy? I'm turning the light off. Yeah, you can't see just the epicness of that, but it looks like a tornado of bugs. I like that. This fish is heavy. Oop. Stay on, buddy. You know, when I came tight, it was just like, whoa, power. Wow. Ooh. That's a long fish. Ooh. Oh, ho, 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 holy. I, I think he's over that. I think he's 40s to 50s. Look perfect. Wow. Got a nice long run. That was a really good fight. Had me nervous the whole time. What a fight. Every head shake, I was just like, holy crap. Look at the head. Will you angle that light down a little bit? Look at the head compared to my hand. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, she's tuned up. Oh. <laughs> awesome. That is freaking sweet, dude. 
that is. Oh, don't tell me that wasn't on. Enlighten me. What just happened? Well, you were snoring. Was I snoring? <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty good. Okay. And your clicker was rolling and rolling, and I yelled at you, and you listened to it for a little bit, and then you got up, and you set the hook, and you said, this fish is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and you were not wrong. You were not wrong at all. I remember saying, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> And guess what? The whole time that camera was on, but not recording, so you didn't get to see me holding this monstrous of a fish up. The biggest, one of the biggest flyheads I've ever seen in my life. But I got pictures, so the fight, I'm sure it's less than stellar. I mean, it's dark. It was a good fight. The barn owls were cheering me on <laughs> the whole time. They're like, you're the man and I'm like whoa but I'm gonna try my best and uh, it was a good fight he was I mean really strong fish and out of two feet of water it's nuts that is but we've heard him exploding all yeah night. we've There's heard we've heard big fish moving around all night and that's one cool thing about low water so it's not ideal that I didn't get them on this camera but Thanks to Ryan, at least he pulled through, and we got some good pictures. Uh, my, uh, is it camera photography? Is that the word? Right now it is. Okay, that right is now. right now. Yeah. Is not on par, but. I guess we'll have to get a 60 and make up for it. Yeah, you are you need a 60. Okay, if I have to. <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you'll I you'll be, to. you'll take that. Yeah. All right. Interesting how that fish hit shortly before that moon crested the trees. Yeah. Ooh. It's early or late, however you want to look at it. And I got to work tomorrow or today, I guess, however you want to look at it. But I'm going to fast forward into the future and I'm going to talk about like the tackle and rigs I used to catch this that fish assuming that I can still see after being blinded by this light and hopefully the camera's working this time but yeah let's go I got my absolute favorite bank fishing setup and you can't tell because from this angle they all look the same but this is a nine and a half foot whisker seeker and that's what I landed that big fish on if I could only fish with one bank fishing setup for the rest of my life It'd be real simple. I'm a big Abu Garcia fan. They make the Abu 6500. 7000 is a great reel, but I think the 6500 will handle pretty much any catfish out there except for extreme circumstances. That, I mean, I mean, they definitely happen, like gigantic flatheads in heavy cover, like 100 pounder in heavy cover. That's going to be tough on this one. Or uh, 150 pound blue cat on the Mississippi River or the Missouri River in extreme current and you're from the bank, it's probably going to be a little undersized. But for 90% of your catfishing situations, 95 even, Abu 6500 is tough to beat. I got 85 pound test whisker seeker braid. The, the thing about these is this is a 9.5 foot rod, but it's so easy to handle, especially with the 6500 on it. It doesn't weigh anything and it's still extremely powerful. I have nothing but good things to say about them. They got a little bit extra long foregrip, so when you hook a fish, shove the rod in your gut, lean back on them, and put a lot of heat on them. And with a big fish, if you got to steer them away from cover, you know, hand above the reel, rod in your gut, lean back. That's the best way to put the torque on them to keep them away, off that brush. I ran a float rig. Float rigs are my favorite, uh, partly because I like seeing a bobber go under, partly because they're really effective. They suspend the bait up and that suspended bait's gonna struggle more, put out more vibrations, call those fish in. And also, like the situation I was in, it was low water. And in low water, you get a lot of problems with turtles. Low water, water without a lot of current, their turtles move around, they feed really effectively. Uh, a suspended bait keeps it off the bottom, away from turtles, and also gives it more room to roam, so it can actually run away from them. And in all honesty, it creates a lot more commotion and vibration to pull those big fish in. 
assuming it doesn't get chomped, which they'll still get them every once in a while on a bobber, but not nearly as much as a base sitting on the bottom. So the other thing, I mean, it's a nine and a half foot rod. There's 12, 13 foot rods out there you can use for bank fishing, get some extra reach. The carbon composite on these, it what it does is when you cast, your rod returns to its original shape faster. The more your rod wiggles, it, that wiggling reduces your overall casting distance. And a rigid graphite or carbon rod, the fact that it returns to its normal position sooner gives you additional casting distance you wouldn't have had otherwise. That nine and a half foot reach helps keep your line off the water and isn't affected by current as much. So you can cast further with a nine and a half footer over seven. And also you have with that extra reach, it allows you better line control, which is the bank fisherman's version of boat control. And in my opinion, makes a big difference as far as bait placement because there's definitely places that flyheads prefer than others. And if you can keep your bait in those places, that bumps up your odds substantially. Nine and a half foot whisker seeker rod, heavy. Obvious 6500, 85 pound braid. Got a bobber. Bobber stops up here. Three way crane swivel, 50 pound leader, 10 knot hook. Then I use 20 pound mono for my sinker dropper, and my sinker actually sits below the hook. Now, this was the first sinker I grabbed. Two ounces isn't heavy enough. I'd use four or five, and that keeps your bait in the place where you want to keep them. Your bait's suspended off the bottom because your sinker dropper is longer than your hook dropper and keeps them struggling. So that's what I use. That's my favorite bank fishing setup. If I can only have one bank fishing setup, that'd be the one. And the fact that I only have one of these, it is my only one. So hope you enjoyed that. I hope this helps. I, hope, I really do. I, I, I really want everybody to go out there and catch something big. And if you do, think about letting him go because he's old. He survived the odds. Most of those small fish out there will never survive to be 50 pounds. They'll get eight. They'll die of disease. Uh, a million other things. So the 50 pounder, he's got the best odds of becoming 60, 70, 80 pounds. So let him go so you, like more people, yourself included, get the opportunity to catch a real big fish. Thanks for watching. Hope you catch that giant.